Hi, my name is Rowan Patikal and in this set of video demonstrations I'm going to be introducing you to two products developed by Simlabs, Virtual Directory Server and LDAP Proxy. Both of these products are developed around the same core engine and in many cases they can be used interchangeably. Simlabs LDAP Proxy is designed for use in LDAP environments catering to all of the major commercial directory servers including Active Directory and Sun Enterprise Directory Server. LDAP Proxy provides a virtualized layer of abstraction between LDAP client applications and directory servers. This virtualization helps to resolve many identity infrastructure problems. These video demonstrations will explore some of the typical problems that are rapidly overcome using this software. During these demonstrations, we will be using the Simlabs Virtual Directory Server product to illustrate how different problems can be resolved. It is important to understand that most of these solutions can be achieved using LDAP Proxy which offers much of the same functionality. However, Virtual Directory Server is capable of working with a greater range of protocols and also includes a bridge which allows you to integrate with relational databases. But we will look at that later. For now, let's look at a few typical situations where you might consider using one of these products. As an organization's infrastructure becomes more complex, a number of problems are likely to arise that impact on performance, security, and integration capabilities. Virtualization of the data layer usually helps to resolve most of these problems. Companies that have recently experienced a merger or an acquisition often find that identity data is fragmented and stored in a number of different repositories. It is not always possible to merge this data due to ownership, application requirements, and even where it is, migrating all of your data into a single directory will almost certainly prove to be prohibitively costly and time-consuming. By using a virtual directory, you can continue to store the data as it is, but you're also able to present a consolidated view of the data that you wish to use to set up global services. This means, for instance, that you're able to provide a single point of access from which to provision authentication across your organization. As directories grow, the hardware that you use to store them often increases in cost. Furthermore, there are impacts on performance and availability, sometimes resulting in the requirement to improve your network infrastructure. Instead of investing heavily in more expensive equipment, it is possible to partition data across multiple directories that can run on cheaper hardware. By using a virtual directory, it is possible to make all of this data appear as if it is stored on one directory that is capable of servicing millions of entries at once. But virtual directories are not only good at presenting unified access to data, which incidentally is key to resolving a lot of product integration problems as well. They also provide the opportunity to process client requests and server responses on the fly to help make your data layer fit with other products that you may want to use. By intercepting requests and responses and unpacking the data within them, scripts are able to manipulate the data inside each network packet so that even if your data is not formatted in a way that a client application expects, you can still get the application to work within your infrastructure. Some clients have approached us with particular security issues that can be easily resolved using ACLs within the virtual directory. This provides a central administration point from which a security policy can be managed and implemented to cover all of your directories. These are just a few of the most common use cases that we have time to mention, but of course there are many more, and we would be happy to discuss yours with you at any point. For now, you should have an idea of the types of scenarios where the products might be used, so let's look at the products in some more detail. Both LDAP Proxy and Virtual Directory Server are comprised of three major components. The core engine, often referred to as DS Proxy, the Remote Access Server, or RAS, and a GUI configuration and management application that we call DS GUI. The core engine really does all of the work. It is responsible for running your configuration instances and interfacing with back-end servers and clients. The RAS is an internally developed configuration instance that will run within the core engine and allows clients such as the DSGUI configurator or an HTML browser to interact with it from a remote system. But our main interest will be in DSGUI as this application makes it easier to configure and manage an instance. DSGUI is written in Java and will run on any Java capable operating system. DSGUI interacts with the underlying configuration files that are read by the DS Proxy engine. 
These files are text-based and are formatted similarly to LDIF files, so it is possible to copy configuration files backward and forward and even to edit them by hand. However, DSGUI provides a simple manageable interface that also includes some custom functionality. Let's look at a configuration file in more detail. As you can see, the configuration is broken down into component parts. For now, we will focus on the parts of the configuration that are specific to achieving some basic functionality. There are three main areas within the configuration that we need to be concerned with. The first is the output section. Outputs consist of server groups that interface with back-end data repositories containing the same data. Server groups can be configured to use load balancing or failover algorithms and can take advantage of the built-in automated health checking. Just as we will need to configure a back-end output interface, we will also need to create an input interface capable of accepting requests from client applications. An input interface is referred to as a listener and you are able to configure different parameters for each listener that you define. Individual pieces of processing functionality can be attached to each listener to allow you to set up different behaviors depending on the traffic moving through the instance. One very useful piece of functionality that we will explore in, this, in these demonstrations is the virtual tree, but more on that later. Finally, in the processing area of the configuration, you are able to define the majority of your processing functionality. This section allows you to, to define different processing stages that can be reused and attached to different listeners. Processing stages allow you to use pre-built bundled plugins to achieve certain types of functionality, but also offer you the option to write your own plugins in the form of simple scriptlets, which we will discuss a bit later. More importantly, the processing stages can be invoked to intercept and manipulate traffic moving between clients and servers. They can also be used to simply trigger other behaviors when particular types of traffic are intercepted. In this video, I have introduced you to two Simlabs products that can be used to improve an existing identity infrastructure and ease a number of common integration problems. In the following videos, we will work through a set of standard configurations of the products to explore how these problems can be overcome. We encourage you to view the next video where we will show you how to set up a simple pass-through proxy that can be used to take advantage of the performance and availability functionality included with both Simlabs LDAP proxy and Virtual Directory Server.